Hello and welcome. This is Lisa Jones, and you are listening to the Exploring Death Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Exploring Death Podcast. I'm Lisa Jones, your host, and today I have with me Myra Mossman. Myra is a federal criminal appeals attorney who has handled complex cases before the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit and appeared before the U.S. Supreme Court. She is also an archival hand bookbinder and paper restorer, a martial artist, and a reader and teacher of the tarot and the Kabbalah. And in her recently published memoir entitled My Random Death, she discusses her near-death experience and how it shaped her life's work. Welcome, Myra. Hello, Lisa. Thank you for having me. Oh, well, I'm so excited to be chatting with you as I've been reading your book, which I'm going to hold up here. I know those that are listening in can't see it, but if you go to the video at YouTube, you can see this beautiful book. And uh, wow, I've just been absolutely mesmerized and just, you know, so excited to read, you know, every next chapter that you've written. What inspired you to, you know, bring this forward? Um, as I, I often say, it wasn't out of vanity. I feel a need to, to express the deep core of what happened. Um, I looked at it as a death experience and I understood it as a murder, hence my random death, the title. And I talk about it as a murder. And it was timely in the sense of the Me Too movement because with all the premonitions that I had, I didn't know if I would be believed. I, and so I kept those premonitions out of the police uh, interview, out of the police report. And so now I felt it was the time uh, to come forward with everything. Also, I was given those five divine directives that I had to accomplish. It took me 40 years. Wow. I've got chills. Yeah, I've got chills as you're talking about your five divine directives, which we're going to get to. And I want to just mention, because I think it's so powerful. I truly do believe as well that you were murdered, you know, based on reading your book. I mean, you were literally murdered because you left your body and you were dead and then came back. And so to me, this is the first time that I've been able to speak to somebody that was you know, their life was taken by another human being and yet is here to talk about it. So I just find this absolutely fascinating. And what, I don't know, what, what can you tell people that are listening that is like kind of the critical, critical experience? Mm -hmm. away with me and I was given premonitions and, and warnings. And so I was very lucid when this was happening. And I, I felt when I let go into death, because I couldn't fight him off in, anymore, I was getting totally exhausted. I let go into death. And prior to that, I was thinking, what is death? Is death just being snuffed out? Is death no more? Where, where is God? Where is Buddha? Where is Moses? Where is Jesus? Where is all the gods that I could think of? And I let go into death. An incredible peace came over me. I was, felt I was going, I felt I was now entering a world of no more fear. No more doubt, no more worry. These is the, this is the world of our everyday walking self. And then when I came back into everyday consciousness, fear entered me. Fear profoundly entered me because I couldn't see him. I didn't know where he was and I wasn't dead. And so I thought, I'll really, uh, he will really die this time. Or, I, I will never come back. And so fear entered me. And then I thought I wouldn't be believed that they might think I was the instigator of the law enforcement and not even investigate this crime. And so the most profound moment was, I mentioned the premonitions leading up to this event. And actually the um, memoir starts a little earlier in my life when I was hitchhiking around Canada to give this context. And so the day before this event happened, one of the final premonitions was I saw the man just the back of him and I felt that's an evil man I've been hitchhiking for years strangers picked me up I, I just saw the back of him that's an evil man and sure enough the next day he sought me out and Wow. And I have chills as you say that, because I think it's so true that we, all of us get premonitions or these overwhelming feelings. And yet many times we just dismiss them or don't 
that's exactly they need, right. right? That's yeah. Exactly right. And that's one of the most important, um, another underlying message here. I'm not a, don't profess to be a, a self-help or any sort of guru, but is to pay attention to those moments where you think this is a coincidence. And especially if it's profound, because if it's a meaningful synchronistic experience, it could change your life. But if you don't, if you're not in touch with your intuition, you don't take, believe it or trust yourself, you just dismiss it, like you said, and you miss yeah. an opportunity for growth. That's, that's and right. Authenticity. And do you think looking back, I'm just curious, um, because you saw the evil man, I mean, and then yesterday, or sorry, the day, ne the day after, uh, you know, he was, he was off on the side of the road, right? And is it? I saw, I, I, I went to the beach. I, I had been with my boyfriend, Victor, for like three weeks, totally, constantly, every hour of every second, every minute. I said, Vic, I just need to be alone. And I walked to the beach. It was like 10 minutes um, from where we were staying, his house and his cottage, his family's house and cottage, but that was in the woods. So I walked out and walked down this little road called Lobsterville Road, and I went to the beach. And there's three people on the beach because Carly Simon and James Taylor were giving a free no nuclear con concert. And it was like three or four in the afternoon. And when I got on the beach, the only thought in my mind was, you're here for a reason. You're here to learn something. And you're here for a reason. You're here to learn something. And then when it stopped, that inner dialogue, I got up and started walking. And the truck that I saw the day before with the evil man standing next to it drove by me drove by me one way, turned around and drove by me, going out away from the beach. And as I turned the corner, the truck now was parked on the side of the road with the hood up. And again, I could not see his face. He was looking under the hood. But when I walked by him, I couldn't see his face, but I sensed he's evil. Right. And, then he and, and, and yeah, and um, so then he attacked you. But do you think, I'm just curious, like, do you think this all happened for a reason, yes. I mean, could you have avoided it? I, 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 don't, I don't know if I could have avoided it because I think there was some destiny at foot and I don't say that lightly, as I don't say murder lightly. Absolutely. And so I think that I was here for a reason. And I, mean, I, don't, I don't profess to know precisely the time frame, but within an hour of this event or so, because I was dead, so I, I, I lost time. <laughs> Uh, I got five divine directives and those transformed my life. I was in Martha's Vineyard to learn how to, before I was going to an interview and I didn't even go to the interview. I went, the direct divine directives, if I may say, was to learn, to move to the other side of the continent. I was on the Pacific, um, on the Atlantic. Now I moved to the Pacific, learn to meditate, learn a martial arts, learn about meaningful coincidences, and learn a metaphysics. And the metaphysics brought me to Tarot. And then I, 10 years later, I got a six divine directives to learn to become a lawyer. I had no clue I was going to become a lawyer. And so I had to, it took me 40 years to master those directives. And then I was, I knew I had to write this book. Absolutely. Wow. That is so powerful to have this whole experience unfold. And like you said, it was almost destiny. I mean, it feels like it after reading the book and, and now talking to you that, um, cause I quite, you know, I wondered about that. Like when things like this unfold, like how much choice do we really have? And I, I don't know either, but. This is what gets us when we understand what a shamanic experience is with these transformational near death moments for people and their whole life changes. And you know that you have, that, that, that you're on that track of change, of transformation. I immediately felt like initi an initiate because I had all these things to learn and study and develop and grow into. And so my life was transformed. And so I think that's a clue to people that are in these near death to pay attention to the minutia, the minutes, the minutia of it. Right, right. And that's what I love too, because then your book goes in and explains how all these unfolded in your life, you know, that you, you met your, that healer and then, you know, the Kabbalah and the tarot and all of that and just how they magically unfolded, which is truly how life is, right? When you allow it. Yes, exactly. And, and um, that's that intuition that can guide us and the intentionality of our thoughts. I want to learn, I have to learn a martial arts. And so I'm intending 
the world, to hope, open it up for me. Uh, the third part of the book goes back into the investigation of the crime. Now, because now I'm an attorney, a criminal attorney, and so I kind of look at it on its head and analyze it from a different way. But I find it interesting that you saw it as a murder, Lisa. You saw it as a murder. Absolutely. You saw this as a murder. Absolutely. And once again, my whole body is chilling because, um, I, and I was kind of thinking like even your title, my random death, I was thinking my random murder, you know, because that's what it, it was so clearly to me, um, you know, murder, but it's, that's a strong statement, right? <laughs> that's a strong statement. We don't, it's, we don't think about coming, murder usually is final, a finality. Right. Right, right, exactly. And yet I've, I've, I've interviewed so many people that have had drowning near-death experience, you know, I mean, if you're drowned, you're, I mean, that's a, conclu you know, conclusive right. death sentence. Drowned is a past tense. Right. So, wow, so interesting. And, and so as far as people, like, as far as gleaning from, you, you know, reading your book, like, what, what's your takeaway? What would you like people to take away from reading? To learn to trust themselves because that will take you out of a victim consciousness. Because if you learn to trust yourself and develop that self-confidence, you can develop that self-esteem that helps you handle the circumstances. And believe me, I'm not always on my best or know everything and confused and I need to, and I'm crying and I need to talk to a therapist and I'm lost. But I know I'm learning to trust my intuition and trust my, uh, that I'm going to, um, make the most out of the meaningful coincidences come into my life. And so I would say, do those things. Trust yourself and pay attention to the coincidences, particularly the meaningful ones. And learn right. all of your own inventory of what that means. You know, what is your favorite number? Well, why is it so showing up now? Or what is that symbol? Or why is that your favorite saying? Or what is the coincidence? That's what Paul Young wanted us to look at too. The inner, how the inner universe is meeting the outer world. Most profound that's, opportunity. that's beautiful. Absolutely. And I, and I'm curious because I came from the corporate world. I was a CPA uh, for a big aid accounting firm back in the day. And, um, you know, I feel like the corporate world and, you know, even, I mean, the, the lawyers of the world, I mean, this kind of businessy world is so devoid of any kind of spiritual connection and I just, I would love your take on that because I, to me, it's your greatest competitive advantage to be in touch with your intuition and to follow your gut. And even some of the top, you know, Bill Gates and, you know, some of these other people, I mean, they talk about their intuition and, and following that. So I'd love your take on that. Well, I think emotional intelligence, I look at it that way. And I think we're starting to phrase it that way. is becoming more um, commonplace in the business world, which I think honestly, from a criminal attorney's point of view, is, a, is sort of a, a beacon for people that are sociopathic. Because you don't have to have empathy. You don't have to have compassion. When the bottom line is, I just want to make the suckers buy whatever I'm selling. And so when you're looking at that kind of personality, it's hard to get spiritual, spirituality in there from a, an everyday sense. But they might go to church on Sunday. Helps them feel good. Uh, but the spirituality is when you're not acting for yourself alone when you're just asking acting for yourself. That's a big clue. Yeah, that's a, that's a great, and I'm, you just made me think about, you know, because you've worked with the criminal side of life. I mean, do you think, is there a disassociation with their, with their connection to their spirituality or to the, you know, this bigger picture, or what do you think it is about criminals in general that are not like, I mean, why do they create, why do, why do they do these terrible things to people? <laughs> they're risk takers, for one. And I think they're much more caught up in their own self-determination. Um, and, and they're not, it's not a rational, and sometimes, and sometimes they're just caught up. I'm, I've been looking at conspiracies and financial conspiracies and big corporate conspiracies where their leader, the CEO is a fraudster. And, but they're, these people are highly charismatic and so what happens with criminals is they don't ask the right questions. They don't ask the right questions of their leaders. They don't question what they're telling them. Or they might have a 
it's sort of a moment of, well, I don't really know and believe and maybe it's not legal, but I believe in him, so it must be legal. And so they get into this charisma of uh, following and oftentimes they're followers that got caught up with this uh, corporate CEO that's going down the dark side. Right. And they believe in all the stuff that they tell him because, you know, they want to be, they want to get rich. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. I think it, I, I'm, it's such a broad topic, but I think you're right. For the most part, it's about gaining their own. It's all for themselves, you know, whether it's getting rich or, or having power. They're self alone. And so you lose compassion for the other. Mm-hmm. And you might be able to include your family in that get rich. But that's mm-hmm. about as far as it can go. Um, and I see a problem. I want to just say this is, the, you know, this lack of empathy is what's occurring right now with the incarceration of people at the southern border. I was a criminal uh, appellate attorney, so all my clients were incarcerated. They were all doing time. I, I'm a criminal attorney. If, they, if they're doing time and it's fairly and done properly under the, under the law, okay. But this is not fair. There's no due process here. We can experience death from just this this circumstances right now, because extermination ha- happens when you're not giving people healthy conditions to live in, when you're not giving them proper sanitation and food. That's a process that leads to exterminating people. And so we're, in, we're living as a, as a culture in this death time. We just witness these killings. I, I, I was on a death, I had what's called, remember Jesse Hollywood, the alpha dog he killed, he was the leader of a pack. They made a mm. out of it. I was called to jury on his trial, but they, want, they were asking for the death penalty and you needed a death qualified jury, a jury that would be able to say, yes, he, he deserves death. I'm not that person. I'm an appellate attorney. I don't believe in society, society taking someone's life. I believe in self-defense. I'm a martial artist. But we're witnessing this death culture right now, this darkness as a culture. It's, it's, this is a synchronistic moment for us. Yes. Personally come into grips with what is death and look how easy it is. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I think it seems to me based on, you know, just reading books and, and hearing about people that, you know, kill somebody, it, it's, it is so easy. I mean, we are so fragile as human beings and it's so easy and it's scary how easy it is to kill somebody. Yes. And, um, you know, it's very political right now, but we have an opportunity to witness what a CEO, was, you know, what a leader would, when they're taking people into darkness. Right. Circumstance and death is an ultimate result of that. And so Absolutely. This, you know, I, I, fa- I had a specialty in financial frauds, banking frauds, mm-hmm. frauds, and the conspiracy and the securities frauds. And so it's um, just a lack of empathy and compassion. Right, right. Wow, so fascinating. Well, I would, I would love to pull a few cards about this if you're open to that. Timing. Yeah, exactly. Okay, let's see what spirit has to say about this time of death. I I agree. You 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 uh, hit the nail on the head there. That it truly is a time of of darkness and death, and hopefully we're coming out of it. <laughs> okay. Well, the first card is the blockage card, and I pulled essence. And what I'm getting about that is, um, you know, the right now in this darkness time, it's kind of like we've lost the essence of true humanity. And it's just, uh, you know, the, the darkness is right. As the light is rising, so is the darkness rising. And so we just need to keep shining more and more light on yeah. this darkness because, you know, you once the light is, is, is um, put upon it, it, it well, reveals itself, right, and vanishes. And each individual must come to that level of civilization within themselves. Right, right. That's the essence of who we are. It's the time of that question. Who are you? That's are right. You? I, I love it. It's my essence. And, the, and so then the action card is simplicity, which once again, I absolutely love that because it's so true, right? It's coming back to our core essence and 
and the simplicity of life and what it means and, and that it's about love and connection and you know we are all one and anything that's being done to somebody like these people at the borders i mean we're doing it to ourselves i mean it's just not okay to treat anybody with less dignity than you would your your beloveds right in your own home exactly and just as easy how simple death can be embracing the light can be that simple and it's a question of making a choice yes it's simple it is. And then the outcome card is voyage. And what I'm getting about this is like, we are truly on a, a voyage to a new world, a new um, understanding of what this truly is all about. And, and it's like you said, each individual person needs to step up and be authentically who they are in their essence. And, and you know, that's the only thing, way it's going to change. We can't rely on anybody else to do it other than ourselves. Correct. And either, you know, you're going to be Shanghai onto someone else's voyage, or you're going to be a stowaway, and you, don't, you know, because you need a, or you can be the director of your own voyage. Correct? That's, that is right. That's the light. Right. But I mean, I think a lot of people are getting shanghai I'm sorry. And they're not in control of their voyage. And, or they think this is the back to the corporate charismatic being that's going to lead. You're not hitching your, hitching your, your, your tow boat onto their uh, ship and you're on their voyage and it can take you into darkness. That's right. And, and be the captain of your own ship. I think that's, your own ship. that's right. That's the message here because truly I, I agree with you. You cannot rely. I think everybody's looking for somebody else to save them. Save yourself. <laughs> yeah. And this is exactly like I was coming to my moment of this is, you want to be authentic. You have to find your core and you want, cause you want to be the captain. Otherwise, I, I, I think it's only either your captain or your Shanghai, because there's no other choice. You know what I mean? That's right. I um, agree. Because if, if, I, if I willingly attach myself to you, then I'm still captaining myself because I'm willingly doing it. But if, if everything else is like I'm just sort of asleep and got, you know, caught up, caught up in some mythology when I'm not even awake. Right dream image that someone's putting forth. That's asleep. You're not awake. You're getting Shanghai. I completely agree. And it comes right back to your original statement about the fear, right? When you, when you were dead, you were like, oh my gosh, there's no fear. It's all wonderful. It's no worry. Right. But then we come into our bodies and we're in this fear mode and, and then people, you know, want to jump on somebody else's ship rather than do their own thing. But it's time to step up. I mean, it just, that's exactly the boost on me. <laughs> Cards for me. <laughs> well, I'm, good. I'm taking it. Awesome. That is great. Well, tell everybody where they can find your amazing book, My Random Death. We can go to myrandomdeath.com. And then there's links to where you can get it on Amazon and Barnes and Nobles and other little juicy bits in there that I'm writing about in my blog. And you'll get some uh, the buzz, what's going on around the book, me talking. Fantastic. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. And I will, of course, have all the links on the show note or the show notes page so people can um, go to my website and find all that information there too. So thank you so much, Myra. This is amazing. I love talking to you. You too. Thank you so much, Lisa, for the opportunity and connecting with you. It's rewarding. Great. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Exploring Death podcast. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. Before you make any financial or legal decisions, consult a professional. This show is copyrighted by Exploring Death. Written permission must be granted before syndication or rebroadcasting.